Welcome back and thank you for tuning in to the Do the Right Thing show whose founder is my pastor and spiritual mother, Pastor Shirley Warden of God's Way Deliverance Ministry in Southfield, Michigan. I am your host today and we broadcast the show between 8 and 8.30 a.m. every Sunday morning and I am the host on the third Sunday of the month. My name is Minister Alicia Clemens. And you can always view the show via Bell Global Network on Comcast TV 20 and also on demand at bgntvgospel.com. Amen. So we're going to go ahead and open up with a word of prayer before we get into the word. Dear Heavenly Father, we just thank you for your people. We thank you, Lord, that you have equipped us to do marvelous and wonderful things in your name. We thank you, Lord, for this broadcast, that your word, Lord, go forth and do mighty things on the earth. We thank you that you would use us as your instruments on this earth, Lord, and that no word in which you have spoken over our lives will drop to the ground without producing what you have sent it out to do. So we thank you, Lord, for blessing and keeping us. We thank you, Lord, for the word in which you have spoken over each and every life. Lord, that you would allow that word to uh, stir up each and every person that's listening to the sound of my voice. Stir them up, Lord, in their, in their spirits and let them know who they are and what great things you have in store for their lives. So we thank you, Lord, and we praise you in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. All right. So today we're going to continue in our study about identity. But today we're going to talk more about names. Amen. I have a question to ask you. I know you can't answer me, but ponder this. Think about your name. And think about um, how your name may be affecting your identity. Have you ever considered that? How it could affect not only your identity, but how about your personality, your behavior, and even so much as your life choices. We may not think about our name in those terms, but when Jesus created the first man and woman, he gave them a name. He named Adam. Amen? And so we understand that when he named Adam, and then Adam named Eve that they had a purpose and a destiny in their name. The scripture also we see in times where people's names were changed because of not where they were but where God was taking them. They had destiny and purpose but until they can embrace their true identity God had to give them another name that depict who he wanted them to be. Okay. In the Jewish culture, it's also believed that a name connects an individual to their soul and it could affect his or her destiny. And we see in scripture some examples. First, Abram. Abram was his original name because it meant uh, father to Aram. But then God changed his name to Abraham, which means father of a multitude of nations. And he did the same thing to Sarah. He changed her name to Sarah, a princess of the world or mother of nations. Also Jacob, his original name meant deceiver, but God changed his name to Israel. And we know him as the father of the 12 tribes of Israel. He had destiny and purpose, not in the deceiver and the person he was, but who God had intended him to be. Amen. And then we have in the New Testament, we can look at Cephas, Peter, who he was called um, after, whereas he was originally called Simon. So you see in the Bible, oftentimes it's Simon Peter. Okay? But his name was changed to Cephas, which translates in Aramaic to mean um, rock, Petros in Greek, 
which we translated English to be Peter. So all of these, th these names were changed based upon who these people were to become. Peter, he said something that was profound um, in the fact that he told Christ who he knew he was. He told him that, I know that you are the Christ. You are the risen God. So he said, that knowledge in which you have received from the Holy Spirit, I'm going to found my church on. And that's why he established him as Peter the Rock. Amen. And then we have Saul. Saul, which we are going to talk a little bit more about today than all the rest of them. Because we see that Paul, Saul's name was converted to Paul. But it truly wasn't. Some think that his name was changed, but it really wasn't changed. He had two names. He had his Hebrew name, which was Saul, and he was a citizen of Rome, so he had a, another name, which was Paul, right? So um, his, his dual citizenship really is what it is that was normal for Romans at that time to have dual names. So after the conversion, his name that he took on was Paul. And the reason why his name, um, he used the name Paul instead of his Hebrew name is because God sent him to the Gentiles and they could more relate to the name of Paul as opposed to the Hebrew name Saul. Okay? So you may have thought in the past that his name was changed, but his name wasn't changed. It wasn't changed, but God used that name that he had even by birth because there was a purpose and a destiny for Paul. And so um, in order for him to go to the Gentiles, he needed to have a name that they can relate to. Plus, we have to understand that Saul, the way he was behaving as um, a Jew, he was persecuting the church of Jesus Christ. He was killing people. He was a murderer. So being um, the behavior that he exhibited before the conversion was kind of counterproductive of where God wanted to take him to the Gentiles. So he had to take on another name. Amen? So let's, let's look at scripture. Let's look at... Um, Philippians 3, 5 through 6. And let's talk a little bit about who Saul was. Because it was a point in time here in the Philippians when Paul addressed the, the Philippian um, believers. And he had to uh, show them where he came from, so to speak. He gave them somewhat of, of, of his pedigree. So he says here that, Though I might have confidence in the flesh, this is verse 4, if anyone else thinks he may have confidence in the flesh, I more so than anyone is what he was saying. He said, I was circumcised on the eighth day. So what does that mean? It was according to the Abrahamic, Abrahamic law, Abraham was given an order by the Lord to circumcise every male in his household on the eighth day after the birth. So that denotes that he was um, part of the Jewish people because they were the ones that God had established this um, process with. So on the eighth day, the foreskin was circumcised. Okay? And that was a sign of covenant. Only God's covenant people were circumcised, right? Then he said he was of the stock of Israel, of the tribe of Benjamin. So that symbolizes that he was a true uh, Israelite. He wasn't a proselyte, meaning that he didn't become, convert to a Jew. He was actually born a Jew, and he was established in his lineage back to the tribe of ben Benjamin. And then he said he was a Hebrew of the Hebrew, meaning he was um, part of Jewish people descent of Abraham. 
and he was which were the people of the one true God so he was establishing himself in um, the in line to inherit the what Abraham's he was Abraham's seed in other words is what I'm saying um, and then he said concerning the law he was a Pharisee the word Pharisee comes from the Hebrew word Perushim which means separatist so the the Pharisees basically separated themselves from other people in in the sense of they kept the law they kept the Torah they were they were very careful to keep ritually pure before the Lord and they separated themselves um, even from other Jews that didn't strictly uh, follow or observe the laws at that time well, the laws of the uh, Jews and Paul he was of the strictest sect of the uh, Pharisees so he was uh, considered himself a, a Pharisee of all Pharisees so to speak so we see here that, that Paul is telling them what his pedigree was when he was in the flesh. The, the Pharisees observed the Torah completely because they thought if they did that, then they'll hasten the return of the Messiah. Not understanding that Jesus Christ was the Messiah, that they were waiting to come. So he thought if he would keep the law and that's why he became very zealous for the law and he went and persecuted the church because he thought that they were heretics um, to be uh, in, um, in other words he thought that they were very basically against the law doing things op opposing the law so he felt as though he was the one that would come against that sect that was rising up to, uh, against the Jewish community right and the laws of God but what he didn't realize in a lot of the Pharisees at that time that all of what they were doing was work based they felt like if I keep the law which required that they do all of the ritual things that the law um, observe all of what was in the law then they would somehow the king of kings would come and it would he would get rid of all of the pagans the romans rulership in the country but that didn't happen because what they didn't realize was those acts that they were doing were in the flesh so messiah came despite what they were trying to do now when we look at uh acts 9 and it talks about paul's conversion you can read that on your own time, but for the sake of time, I'm just going to paraphrase what it was basically saying in um, Acts 9. So in Acts 9, he, he's talking about his conversion. He was on the road to Damascus. He had got orders to go in and he could take out any male or female that was in the way. That was what they called Christians um, at first. They were people in the way. So it was kind of in the way of the Pharisees and keeping the law. So they thought. But anyway. So he goes to Damascus. And he's kind of full of himself. So the Lord had to knock him off his high horse. So he ended up meeting Jesus on the road to Damascus. And Jesus, of course, came to him. And he said, Saul, Saul why are you persecuting me and he said who, who are you I don't even know who you are and he said I'm Jesus Christ and there Jesus revealed himself to him as Messiah the long-awaited Messiah so at that time he became blind he didn't know it until he got up and opened his eyes but then God told him go into the city and I want you to wait there but unbeknownst to him God told him to go to this street, the street called Straight. Sometimes in life, we are on the wrong street. God told him, this is the straight way. I'm taking you on a street. And I don't think it was coincidental that it was called Straight, right? He had been going the wrong way. He had been going down a crooked path. Can we see ourselves in that? 
There are times when we are going down the wrong path or even we keep making turns and twists and turns in a road and we end up in the same place that we started and we wonder how we got there, right? Because we're doing things in the flesh, not realizing God is saying, get right, go in the straight road. I put it before you. And he's standing there with his arms open wide, waiting for you, beckoning you to come. Get aligned with him. Come down that straight road to get to where your destiny and purpose is. And that's what he did with Saul. It wasn't to, to Saul, um, was, hands were laid on Saul and he gained his sight that he saw things correctly. He saw himself correctly. God had to physically blind him to get him to see how blind he was in the spirit to who God was and also to who he was. Because we just have to understand that if you don't know who Jesus Christ is, you don't know who you are. Let me say that again. If you don't know who Jesus Christ is, you don't know who you are. Why do I say that? Because when we were formed, he says that we were formed in his image. And in his likeness. We talked about that when we were in Genesis. If we were formed in the image of God. And we are like him. Then our identity is hidden in Christ. So if I don't know Christ. Then how do I rightly see myself? How do I know myself? And see that's what God was trying to show um, Paul. At his conversion. You are blind to the truth. So now I'm going to enlighten you. I'm going to put you on a straight path to your destiny so that you can fulfill my purpose in the earth, which is to go out and preach and teach the gospel of Jesus Christ to the Gentile nation. Right? So that's where he ended up. Okay? And, and it's the same with us. If you don't know who your, uh, your identity is hidden in, then you will make similar mistakes as Paul. Paul saying, hey, I'm zealous for God. But he was doing everything in his flesh. And he was doing everything to oppose God. So he didn't realize that he was doing it because he thought, well, if I keep the law, then I'm doing all that's required. As a matter of fact, Paul was taught by the best teacher of the Torah of the time, Gamaliel. He was the best teacher. So he even spoke and told people, look, I was taught by the best. I excelled above everyone in my class. I knew it all. And so I had every right to go out and do the things that I was doing because I had zeal for the Lord. I knew what was right and I was doing it. So often we think we know what's right. We're doing the things that are required of us. Hey, I went to church on Sunday. Check the box. I tithed. I'm checking the box. Hey, I prayed um, for 10 minutes today. Check the box. Oh, I also prayed for the, the sick. Let me check that box too. Oh, I went to mid-week uh, mid, uh, service. Check the box. We're doing all of these things in the flesh but the whole intent and purpose of what we're doing has nothing to do with God I'm just doing it because of religion because I'm told that I'm supposed to do it what Paul was doing he had no relationship with Jesus Christ he was zealous for the things of God but he had no relationship with God he had head knowledge. He knew the Torah. He probably could quote it frontwards and backwards. But when he met Jesus Christ on the road, he didn't even know who he was. He said, who, who are you? I don't know who you are. Because he had no relationship. He said, those who know me, they going to know my voice. My sheep know my voice. And they don't hearken to any other voice. So we see Paul had no relationship. So he was disconnected to his identity. Okay? So everything he was doing, persecuting the church, murdering people because he thought he was right, was all in the flesh. And we see that 
on if you watch the news it's happening around the globe people are killing other people because they think that th what they're doing is right and that's not that's not right that's not God God is a God of love he is a God of mercy he could have struck Saul down because of what he did to his church but instead he loved on him and he restored him back so that he can see rightly and that's what God is doing for us today he is saying, I want you to see yourself through my eyes. I want you to see yourself through the destiny and purpose I have for your life. He doesn't want us to look at what happened in the past or what we did. If Paul had stuck, if he had stayed stuck in that place, then he would never have done the things that he did. And we wouldn't be talking about him today. We wouldn't be reading, you know, the epistles that he wrote. We, we wouldn't be walking in an understanding and light that we are today. Yeah, God could raise up someone else. But Paul had a choice. He could have said, you know what, I'm going to stay here. I'm going to sit here blind, deaf and dumb to what Jesus Christ is saying to me about my destiny. Are you going to be the one that won't fulfill God's destiny for your life because you are stuck in a place of unbelief and doubt or even fear? Well, I don't know if I could do it. Moses, I, I don't speak very well, so I can't do this. No. God is saying it's time for you to rise up. Take authority. If you, know, if you know who you are in Christ, then you can tell the devil to get behind you. If you know who you are in Christ, then you can understand when he says, If God is for you, then no one, nothing can stand against you. So the enemy will try. He'll try to attack you. He'll try to make you believe you know something that is not true. But God says, if I am for you, then who can stand against you? Not anybody can stand against you. Because God knows what his plan and purpose is for your life. He knows your beginning from your end. And if you understand who you are in him, then you'll tell the enemy no. You won't rely on your flesh to get you by. And keep wondering why you're coming up short. Because you forgot or you missed it. You got off base because of whatever the situation. Well, I'm the least of the least in my family. Oh, I can't do that because I don't have a, a college education. Oh, I can't do that. God's not going to use me because I'm an addict. God's not going to use the addict. He's not going to use the alcoholic. Oh, no, I was be abused. Um, I, I just have so many problems. I, I just, I couldn't do it. Look at Joyce Meyer. That woman talks about, she uses her abuse as a platform. God can use anything. If he can use a donkey, then he can use you. Right? Because he loves you more than he loves a donkey. So understand, just like the Apostle Paul, he was murdering God's children. He was murdering his precious people, his covenant people. But God still used him. Why didn't God use any of the other disciples, the twelve that walked with him? Why did he use Saul when he was, wasn't even with Jesus? He wasn't a disciple of Jesus. Right? He didn't know him intimately because God knew the plans that he had for his life. God knew his beginning from his end. That zeal he had as a Pharisee, God used that zeal. That was already imparted in him, but he was using it for the wrong purpose. But when God turned him around, he used it. For the good of, the, of, of God. The glory of God. Right? So God can turn around. Even that which the enemy has stolen. 
or he's used for his purposes, God can turn it around for your good so that he gets the glory, not the enemy. So if you're sitting there and you're wondering what, your, what God's plan and purpose is for your life, then ask him. Sit before the Lord. Humble yourself and ask him, Lord, what must I do to believe? Align yourself with what his word says concerning you. Every spoken word over your life, you need to embrace it. You need to say yes to it, Lord. Not, I don't think I could do it. What do you think would have happened if Mary said, no, I, I'm not going to receive that. I, I can't have a baby. I've never been with a man. But she said, let it be unto me according to your word, Lord. She immediately agreed with the word that God spoke over her life. Some of you will hear the word that God, you know, a word of prophecy or God is speaking to you. Um, and then you want to ignore it or say, no, I can't do it. You want to deny that that's God. But God is saying, I am speaking over your life right now. And just like when Mary went to see her cousin Elizabeth and the baby inside of her jumped. God is saying, hey, you feel that baby jumping inside of you? That's me. That's your destiny is knocking at your door today. And I'm saying to you today, rise up, men and women of God, and take your place of authority on this earth. Do that which the Lord has given to you to do. Because guess what? Daylight is going to be ending, and, and soon you won't be able to see. So the world needs your light now. So if you don't know who God is, if you don't know who He called you to be, then you need to get with him. You need to say, Lord, I know that I've sinned. I know I've missed the mark in the past. But Lord, I want to get right with you today. I want to walk in my destiny and my purpose and everything that you have for my life. And Lord, I repent of any sin anywhere in my life where I missed it before. But now I want to be on the straight road. The road that leads to you and everything you have for my life. So use me, Lord, for your glory. Accept him today because you don't have tomorrow. It's not promised to you. No one knows what hour a day he's coming. So get it right today. God is saying, I love you with an everlasting love. And I am drawing you by that love. And he doesn't want anyone to miss him. He loves you intently. So please. Please let him into your life. All right? So I'm sorry, but I am out of time. But I just want to say how much I love you. And I pray for you. And I want you to do the right thing. Right? Remember, do the right thing. Receive Jesus Christ. Amen. Bye and see you next week. My name is Mike Duggan and I'm watching the Bell Global Network. Hey, keep it locked. It's your boy D. Hattie. You're watching the Bell Global Network. You know how it is. Hi, I'm Charlie Langton and you're watching the Bell Global Network. Hi, this is Martha Reeves and you're watching Bell Global Network. What's going on, y'all? It's Mr. Bell. Some know me as Anton Quarboy Bell. Others know me as Elder Anton Bell. I am co-CEO of Bell Global Network, VGN TV 2090. And I want to invite you right now to get your own broadcast. I'm calling all ministers, all politicians, all business owners. Get your own broadcast right now, starting at $99. And if you have an idea for a TV show, we can bring your idea to reality. We have packages available that includes production, and facilities. Also, we have advertising packages starting at through those $25. So don't hesitate. Give us a call at 313-355-7877. Once again, that's 313-355-7877 to make an appointment.